We ask that you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag and remain standing for our invocation. pray. Oh, gracious God, we come as humble as we know how. Lord, we want to say thank you for being so good to each and every one of us. We come, O oh Lord, knowing that we are undeserving of your grace, but you allow us to have your grace and mercy every day, and we thank you for that. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the opportunity that you have given us to assemble here and do the business of this city. Pray for those who are doing the business and those who are assembled to see that what we do. Now, Lord, we're not selfish in our prayer. We're praying for those who are less fortunate than we are, those who are hurting, those who are bereaved, and those who are fighting in harm way. Be with them. We pray your blessings upon our president and the Congress and the decisions they make. We pray for our state government, oh, Lord, right now and the decisions that they have to make, for our county government as well as the city government here. We honor you and give you the glory for this opportunity. When we leave here tonight, O oh Lord, direct us safely to our destination. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have Clerk we call the roll, please. Councillor Striplin. Here. Councillor Wood. Here. Councillor Brown. Here. Councillor Starnes. Here. Councillor Whiteside. Here. Councillor Bowles. Here. Councillor Boone. I call this meeting to order the character trait of the money in September is decisiveness, the ability to recognize key factors and finalize difficult decisions. At this time, we're going to have approval of minutes. City Council meeting September 1st, 2015, and work session September 9th, 2015. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor of approval of those minutes signify by raising your right hand. And those minutes have been approved. At this time, we have comments from persons present regarding tonight's agenda. Please raise your hand and come forward. Yes, ma'am. My name is John Lee Tennekin. I live at 211 Deer Trace. And the reason I'm coming before you is um, I spoke with the mayor earlier today, and I was expecting to see the budget online so citizens could look at it and be able to ask questions before it was approved. And um, I did try to find out, and he informed me that um, some of the council people were letting their residents see it, and I was just trying to find out, you know, who was contacted and when you let them see the budget. Does anyone have an answer for Ms. Finnegan on that? None of my constituents called me. Okay. Um, I had a few constituents that were not in my district that contacted me. I told them they could stop by the carpet store and look at it any time they wanted to, but nobody ever did. Did you contact your representative? No, because I was expecting to see it online. Okay. And then I saw it on the agenda last night. And um, with all sincerity, I didn't think, you know, it was coming before you this meeting. And so I didn't, I didn't contact you. Well, it's got to be voted on tonight, which we've all know for years and years because October 1st is the new budget yeah, year. A lot so. of times it's not been October 1st. Well, this ain't the old council. Yeah. Thank you. No. Anyway, um, you got the budget on September 1st, and then you had the work session, and then unfortunately I work Wednesday night, so I wasn't able to attend. And I was just wondering how you would feel about having the budget put online after the work session and prior to you voting on it. At this point, uh, Ms. Finnegan, is from the chair point of view, uh, the work session was held and there was no one in opposition to bringing this budget before us and passing it tonight unless someone uh, asked from this diocese that that happens. And I have no idea if that happened or not, but we'll wait when that matter comes up. I mean, I was, I'm trying to find out how you feel about, because before we were able to see the budget and, you know, talk to our, um, our council people and ask questions and maybe even find something that was an error that could be fixed, et cetera. And um, I just, I was just surprised that it wasn't available 
Yeah. And as I said, I wasn't available on Wednesday. Okay. And also, um, there wasn't a video. I actually tried to look at the video for it too, yeah. for the work session. Okay. And the resolution has no price in there that you're voting on. So that, that's another reason. You know, if at least we could see the price too, or the amount, I should say. The one that's on the draft, that's, that's on the website. Okay, uh, I don't have uh, what the, at least I haven't looked to see okay. for tonight. Uh, they should we have a document here, and I'm sure the mayor is going to present it. Well, once he presents it, then we'll take action. Okay. Uh, but it, it has not been presented in a okay. formal matter. But he did give us the opportunity to look at it, which was great, so that we can have an opportunity to have a work session. Okay. And any uh, of our constituents that chose to call us and talk to us, I'm sure all the council members would be glad to have, to have done so, even if it wasn't this time online. But it will, if it passes tonight, will go online. And if there are some things that need to be looked at, as with any document, any budget, they're trying to pass one over there now, a working document, and then things can be changed. Okay. Uh, do you, can I ask how you feel about it? going online prior to you voting on it so that constituents are able to see it and, and bring questions because if after the work session, then you would have had a week to be able to, to answer questions rather than having people come up and ask up here. Well, I, they can put it online as soon as it's passed, if it's passed tonight. But I mean, we used to get it prior to that. So that we can uh, have questions and be able to bring it forward. Uh, and I'm aware of that, and we didn't this time, but okay. uh, that's something we'll probably have to look at. But tonight, it's up for passage. Okay. And as soon as we pass it, pass it, that's going to be a document that can officially be placed online. And it may not pass, I'm not sure. So perhaps in the future, we would be able to see it prior to yeah. you. Perhaps, yeah. Perhaps. And, and, yeah, we, we try to be open. Uh, a lot of times we don't quite get it right and do everything, but, but we're not mandated, I don't believe. And if I'm wrong, Mr. McDowell, please let me know. We're not mandated to put anything out there. We're not mandated to have any videos, even of this council meeting, but we do. Uh, and absolutely work sessions, uh, we do when we had equipment there, but we didn't have the equipment there right. this time. But. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor, you have a report? Yes. <laughs> Good evening, counselors. I want to thank the public safety for the tremendous job they did on Friday in honoring and remembering the following, uh, fallen heroes of 9-11 that represented this city well on this somber occasion. This past Saturday, we celebrated Prattville's 176th anniversary with the street concert. The Brian Jackson Band entertained a good crowd and the weather was beautiful and I appreciate all of you that joined me on stage to welcome the crowd and hope you all enjoyed yourselves as much as I did. Coming up on September 26th, we'll hold our fifth annual Worldwide Day of Play event. Uh, please check on with our city website for more information on that as it's available. On the proposed budget before you, counselors, we all know that we have an effect on our economy. The state of Alabama has a certain effect on our economy. As our state legislative works to resolve state general fund shortfalls, we must be mindful of the effects it may have on the city of Prattville. We currently have a CDBG application at ADECA, waiting a decision on that. And if state matching funds disappear, it will affect the outcome of that application. There are other agencies such as ALDOT, which could be affected. Any cuts to state services or funding will directly or indirectly affect us on the municipal level. With all that being said, counselors, on item four of tonight's agenda is a roadmap for our needs in 2016. Our revenue has increased over the past year. However, this budget was built off of the previous year's actuals. Our needs exceed our income. I need to repeat that. Our needs exceed our income, but rest assured that our expenditures will be controlled to correspond with this budget. 
Our financial footprint is firm and we continue to make progress, not only paying down the debt, but also making capital inve investments to areas that provide services and infrastructure for this city. There's good debt and bad debt. In this budget, there are multiple opportunities to continue to make good investments and be resolute stewards of taxpayer dollars, which is our priority one. Passing this budget, we make another step toward financial, physical responsibility and ensuring continued growth opportunities for our partners at Prattville. I want to thank you counselors for going through this budget page by page during the work session last week. Your thoroughness left no questions unanswered. I also want to thank all of our department heads, Doug Mosley, Lisa Thrash, Robbie Anderson, Joel Duke, Chief Brown, Chief Thompson, Kelly Cook, Dale Gandy, Kathy Dickerson, Judge Colley, Charlotte Adair, Teresa Lee, and so many others to help prepare all this. I ask you to move forward in passing this budget. I appreciate all of your hard work through these committees and as a body for the betterment of this great community, a community that Daniel Pratt would be proud to call home. Council President Wood, unless you have any other questions, as in my report, as, as well as my final report for fiscal year 2014-15. Thank you, Mayor. Does any council member have any questions or comments for the mayor at this time? Council Bowles. Um, Mr. Mayor, this might be a question for Mr. Mosley. This year, have we gone over budget for the budget year that we're actually in today? Are we over budget at all? Uh, oh, no. So we're actually under budget from your last year's budget. We're going to be right, right even with it. Great. One Thank of you. our job, one of our roles is to make projects happen, whether that's paving projects or, or um, repairs for our structures. So it's, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our needs are way ahead of our resources. And do you consider your budget a line item budget or a lump sum budget? It's a line item budget. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. This time we have a report on Council Special Committee's Council Stripling. Yes, sir. A brief report. Wastewater Committee met uh, Monday, September the 14th to review a preliminary engineering estimate for Phase 2 of the Pine Creek expansion. Phase 2 includes both increasing the Pine Creek and the Fay Branch collector systems. That is, a dedicated easement and the pipes in these two areas will be increased in size to accommodate greater flow to the Pine Creek facility for the next 30 plus years. Due to the current proposed costs, this phase might be divided into two or more projects. Our planning department provided projections for the anticipated population growth for this area, which was used to project the increase needed plant capacity. Through the services of a of a professional consulting firm, we plan to use this same data to determine what rate structure is appropriate to recover these costs. The committee plans to present for your approval at our next meeting a consulting contract that is expected to provide cost recovery information. The cost of this consulting contract is within the wastewater 2016 budget. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Brown. Councilor Starnes? No, sir. Councilor Whiteside? No, sir. Councilor Bowles? No, sir. Councilor Boone? No, sir. With that, we have our report of status on city finances. Everyone should have the financial packet in front of you. Uh, the first sheet in the packet, as always, is the revenue report for the month of August. Uh, you'll see that we are 83.33% through the year on the revenue side. Uh, we have received 92.24% of our budgeted revenue. So we're running well ahead. Um, you also see that year to date we are up 0.98% from last year on the revenue side. All very positive. Uh, the next sheet in the packet is the tax breakdown comparison uh, showing the change in um, year over year for the different taxes. You'll see uh, for the month of August, we were up 3.8% on taxes. So also very positive. The next set of sheets in the packet is the expense breakdown uh, by department for the month of August. Uh, on the expense side, we are 91.67% through the year. Uh, and if you will notice at the end of the sheet, we have, we're 96. 
I'm sorry, 91.67% through the year, and we've uh, only spent 84.36% of our budgeted expenses. Um, so we're ahead on uh, expense on revenue, and we're um, holding back on our expenses. The next sheet in the packet is the wastewater enterprise fund income statement. Uh, you will see that they're running li right in line with what they should be as far as their budgeted revenues. You'll also see on the expenses it looks high, but that's because of the early payment of the SRF debt. The next sheet in the packet is the sanitation enterprise fund income statement. Uh, you'll see that they are running ahead on their rev budgeted revenues. They received 84.20% of their budgeted revenues, uh, and they've only spent 83.31% of their expenses. Next sheet in the packet is the Judicial Special Revenue Fund Income Statement. Uh, you'll see that uh, they have only received 76.24% of their budgeted revenues. Uh, part of that's due to the discontinuation of the contract with JCS. Uh, we're working to try to get those funds back in using in-house personnel. Uh, they've also held back on their expenses. <coughs> and those, they've only spent 67.30% of their budgeted expenses. Next sheet in the packet is the bank account balances report showing that the balance of all city accounts on August 31st, 2015 was $18,498,022.73. And the last sheet in the packet is the accounts payable and debt balances showing the balance of all city accounts payable and debt on August 31st, 2015 was $40,872,522.39. Thank you. Does any council members have any questions or comments? Council Bowles. I have several. Um, October, we have a bond payment due. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Do we have cash on hand to pay for it? Yes, sir. And once again, this budget that we're in, we have spent less money than we had budgeted? Correct. And we collected more butt money than we had budgeted? And the new bu budget that we're going to talk about in a few minutes, it is based on the amount of money that we actually collected, not initial accruals. Correct. It's just what we've collected. Great. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Moser. We're going to our agenda. Item number one is to zone property located at 630 Vintage Way, 205 Patio Garden Homes. We had a public hearing on this item tonight. It was introduced on August the 18th, 2015. It will be in discussion on this ordinance. All in favor of adoption signify by raising your right hand. And this ordinance is adopted. Item number two also is an ordinance to zone property located at Rocket Mount Road at Old Farm Lane to FAR. We also had a public hearing on that item tonight. It was also held from our August 18, 2015 meeting. There will be a discussion on that item. All in favor of adoption signify by raising your right hand. And this ordinance is adopted. Number, item number three is a resolution to declare the structure located at 101 North Chestnut Street to be unsafe and a public nuisance. It has been held from May 5th, May 19th, June 2nd, and September the 1st. Will it be any discussion on this item? Yes, sir. I'd like to state, I believe this body has shown patience and leniency towards this property owner. I request your support on moving this resolution forward as a public nuisance and unsafe structure at uh, 101 North Chestnut Street. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on this item? All in favor of adoption signify by raising your right hand. And this item is adopted. Number four, resolution to adopt city of Pratt with Fiscal year 2015, 2016, generating operating fund, gas tax fund, debt service fund, capital project fund, sanitation enterprise fund, wastewater enterprise fund, and judicial special revenue fund, revenue fund budgets. 
Councilor Brown, will you read it, please? Yes, sir. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama, as follows that for the purpose of financing the conduct of affairs of the City of Prattville, Alabama during the period October 1, 2015 and ending September 30, 2016, inclusive, the General Operating Fund, Gas Tax Fund, Debt Service Fund, Capital Projects Fund, Sanitation Enterprise Fund, Wastewater Enterprise Fund, and Judicial Special Revenue Fund budgets for the City revenues and expenditures for such period as prepared and submitted to the Council by the Mayor are hereby approved and adopted as the official fiscal year 2015-2016 budgets for the City of Prattville, Alabama, with a combined total of $43,529,743.89. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Will there be any discussion on this resolution? All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. And this resolution is adopted. Item five is to surplus one vehicle from the fire department. Councilor Bowles, will you read it, please? Yes, sir. Whereas the city of Prattville, Alabama, has certain items of personal property which are no longer needed for public or municipal purposes, and whereas 11-43-56 Code of Alabama 1975, as amended, authorizes the municipal government body to, to dispose of unneeded personal property. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that the following personal property owned by the City of Prattville, Alabama is no longer needed for public or municipal purposes and said property shall be removed from inventory of the Fire Department. 2001 Dodge Dakota, VIN number 1B7GL2AN71S215196, Department number 09-002. Be it further Resolve that the City Council of the City of Prattville instructs the Mayor to sell said vehicle through govsdeal.com and the proceeds to be deposited in the general fund. I so move. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Will there be any discussion on this item? All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. And this item is adopted. At this time, we have comments from President President on any other item. Yes, ma'am. John Lee Finnegan, 211 Deer Trace. Um, I just wanted it on the record, uh, Mr. Starnes, about the um, parking on the front lawn. Has there been any progress on that? No, ma'am. I looked over your letter that you sent me in the ordinance, and I just, I'm still working. Okay. okay, I just wanted it for the record. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else? May I have closing comments? Yes, sir. I think this last year has gone very, very well. I think it's because of the hard work of this uh, city council uh, combined with the hard work of the city department heads and all their staff and um, when you couple that with uh, all the great people that we have in Prattville, Daniel Pratt most certainly would be glad to call Prattville his home again. So thank you one and all. Thank you. Councilor Strippen? No, sir. Councilor Brown? No, sir. Councilor Stearns? No, sir. Councilor Weissat? No, sir. Councilor Bowles? Yes, sir. I want to thank the department heads for the hard work on Ms. Lee, the mayor, on this budget. And kudos to the fire department. Now, I don't know, I'm not delved into a lot of the other departments because I am the committee chair of the fire department. And I know our fire chief not only does this once a year, but he does it daily, monthly, weekly. He goes by this thing constantly, every day, every week, every month, like a Bible. And that's how his department is ran so sufficiently and never goes over budget. And I just wanted to give you a public word of thank you for that because a lot of people don't see that behind the scenes of how much time and effort you put behind the scenes not only to create the budget to make sure we stick to the budget thank you chief council boom yes, let me take this opportunity to thank all employees as always for the work that you've done i want to thank the mayor and his administration and all of those who have worked on this budget uh, as we all know a, a budget is a fluid document it can change 
This gives us a guide, and it is a pretty good guide for us to be led by. Uh, I want to thank the council for the work that you've done diligently all year long. And since you've been on this council and working with your committees to make sure that you're involved in what's going on. So we appreciate that. Uh, even though it looks pretty good right now, we do have some difficult days ahead. So we must watch our spending. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with state government. We don't know what's going to happen with federal government. We don't know what's going to happen with the economy as a whole. But I can say we do know that we will be having to spend millions of dollars as Councilor Stripling alluded to in the wastewater department. All of our citizens, you and the ones out there, wanted to continue to flush. So at some point, we're going to have to invest millions and millions of dollars. And I take this opportunity to say this tonight because I know it's going to be a shock to some people when the price tag comes out. But we are planning for the next 25 to 30 years, and hopefully we pray that we'll be guided to do the right things. So with that being said, we have a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.